Well, hey everybody, John Rathlin here, and this is Hashtag Ask for Honesty, episode 12. Recording this right after episode 11, so I didn't even bother to change the background. I mean, really, why the fuck not? If you're paying attention to the shirts more than me, I don't blame you, because I am pretty shit. But anyway, I digress. <clears throat> if I did not answer your questions in episode 11, they are going to be answered here. So if I do happen to miss even one or two of them, please make sure to send me a screenshot on Twitter or send it in DM, and I will answer it in episode 13, which will be up... Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, one of, one of those three days. I may take a couple days off to give you guys a chance to watch these. But anyway, if you want to send a question, please uh, comment below this very video, and I will include it in uh, the next episode or, you know, episode 14, whichever one I get to. It will be in one of the next couple episodes. Hit me up on Twitter, DM me three to four questions <clears throat> maximum. That way I have the most time to answer uh, any of them. If, in, rare, in, in rare instances, I will take five <clears throat> if... They're really, really good ones, but sometimes if you if you send me more than four, it may be less detailed on a couple of them, so just FYI, or check out my uh, pin tweet on Tuesday mornings or Thursday mornings, and you have two opportunities usually to send me questions. So anyway, let's just get right on with it, and we're going to start off with Valena WWE. <laughs> um, she sent me uh, five questions, and pretty good questions. Um, as always, and by the way, uh, you guys, if, if I skip over any of your guys' questions or if I only answer them a little bit, some of them I may not have as much to say about. It doesn't mean that I have anything against what you guys send me. I love what you guys uh, send. Fellow wrestling fan, all the fellow wrestling fans, thank you so much. But back to Valena's questions, <clears throat> and these are going to be pretty damn good ones. Um, thoughts on Matt Riddle poking fun uh, at Goldberg for being a shitty wrestler via Twitter, via Twitter video. And I mean, if you didn't see it, Matt Riddle posted like one or two videos or stuff like that. It may have just been one. Actually, he posted two because he commented about how Goldberg was a shitty wrestler and then it was like the whole knee bar thing and stuff like that. And maybe it was a split up video. Maybe it was the same one. But, uh, she says, do you think Riddle is being unprofessional, unprofessional, sorry, had to put that pun in there. Uh, you know, by posting that video, seeing as he signed to WWE, or do you think he's just trying to do this for fast clout? I don't know what clout means. Um, that makes me sound old. I'm assuming that you mean for praise, or he's trying to get praise, he's trying to get a bunch of people to, um, you know, get on his side and everything, or, hey, I'm just going to throw this controversial shit out here and I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to get some buzz. If that's what you mean, then okay. I do apologize. I'm not trying to make you feel stupid. I actually feel stupid because I can't keep up with a lot of terms. But anyway, taking your questions as they are. Th uh, Matt Riddle poking fun at Goldberg for being a shitty wrestler. Now, I will say this. One, I hope Goldberg is okay. That match with Undertaker is fucking brutal. It was fucking brutal. Goldberg was clearly gassed. So was Taker. It's not like either of them weren't gassed. Goldberg hurt himself going into the ring post. <clears throat> Probably hurt himself, you know, bonking his head on the locker door or, you know, on the, you know, door to the locker room or whatever it was, like he always does for a pre-match ritual because he's 52 years old and probably shouldn't be doing that. But Goldberg, Goldberg has never been a good wrestler. That's the thing. That's the one thing where I don't understand why people are poking that Matt Riddle was like, oh, he's, you know, being this and this and this. Goldberg was never a good wrestler. Goldberg was a wrestler that you could put out there for a few minute matches or you know a couple minute matches and that's about it really all Goldberg could do is hit high impact moves quick you know quick fast offense powerful moves spear jackhammer that's it and he's back you know in the locker room within eight minutes like does his entrance entrance might take 90 seconds maybe two minutes gets in sells a little bit or whatever you know after like some big moves big power moves sells a little bit but ends up making his comeback spear jackhammer that's it and that's how you book Goldberg the two spears and everything were fine, and then everything, and then that knee bar, and that was something that Riddle did point out. The knee bar was really sloppy, which, let's be honest, go, over, if, go back and watch 97, 98, 99, 2000 and whatever. Sorry, Goldberg's knee bar was shit. Goldberg's knee bar was always shit. His wrestling was never that good. He was what he was. He was a power guy, short burst, <coughs> that's it. So him pointing out for him being a shitty wrestler didn't bother me. I mean, apparently Riddle, I guess, blocked Goldberg on Twitter for like something he said. I don't remember exactly what. But if he posted that, just kind of digging at him because he, you know, you know, because he was hurt and everything. Oh, you're a shitty wrestler and this kind of stuff. Yeah, that's a bit of a dick move. Riddle may have not known he was hurt. Riddle could have just thought he was selling. Riddle may have not given a shit. Who knows? <clears throat> there could be some backstage heat. This could all be an elaborate work. Bro, it may not be. I mean, not everything's a work. It could be a way to have Riddle versus Goldberg at um, Saudi Arabia. 
even though I'm not sure how Saudi Arabia feels about marijuana, so I don't know how Riddle would uh, fit in over there. In fact, I'm pretty certain that Riddle <laughs> probably wouldn't be welcome in Saudi Arabia. Just a guess. Just a little bit of a guess. Not that he's the only one on any kind of substances, but moving on. The video I thought was funny. I mean, I did. I've never been the biggest fan of Goldberg. I am glad he's hopefully okay. I feel bad for the fact that people were <laughs> mostly poking fun directly at him. Like, cracking jokes and everything in this kind of stuff. I was cracking jokes during the Saudi Arabia review. Slash rant. Slash yelling. Thank, or, you know, raising my voice and everything. Thank you guys for the great views, by the way. Riddle poking fun at him didn't bother me. Was it unprofessional? Yeah, it, it was. But also, I don't think Riddle gives a shit. Riddle knows that even if WWE releases him, he could go anywhere else. And is it is it him thinking uh, him thinking too highly of himself? Will he ever be known as well as Goldberg? No, because and I, I'm, not, I'm not even saying Riddle could wrestle circles around Goldberg. Hell, you could find most anybody to wrestle circles around Goldberg as far as somebody that's been in the ring, because <laughs> Goldberg was never that good, but he was what he was, as I've said before. Riddle may not be as much of a household name as Goldberg because of Attitude Era, you know, big old ratings and everything, Monday Night Wars, all that stuff, and Goldberg is the name that's still remembered now. Will people remember Matt Riddle in 20 years? Maybe, maybe not. Hard to tell. <clears throat> but unprofessional? Yeah, I will say that. Was it funny? To me, it was funny. It was. Now, I'm, again, glad that Goldberg is okay, but yeah, him being signed to WWE and doing that, he may just not give a shit. Um, he could just be doing it, as you said, for... <clears throat> Clout, which I assume, again, is something that has to do with getting praise or getting buzz and everything and people on his side. He could just be doing it as a way to build a feud. We could be getting Riddle versus Goldberg at some point, maybe a SummerSlam. I think it'd be a pretty stupid idea, given what we just saw happen to Goldberg and the fact that he would be gassed within two minutes. <coughs> but who knows? Unprofessional, yes. Funny to me, sure. Because I, I find some shit like that funny. Would I have done it if I was signed to WWE? No, but Riddle is skilled enough, and maybe he feels he can get away with it. Now, will he get buried? If he was on the main roster, you're goddamn right he would get buried. In NXT, don't necessarily know. He will never be a champion, but if he's called up to the main roster anytime soon by SummerSlam, Survivor Series, or whatever, unless Vince has a short memory, which, judging by his booking, he pretty much does, Riddle may end up getting buried for this, or maybe some heat between him and Goldberg. This is assuming Goldberg is going to work again. I hate to say it, he may not want to. That's a terrible match to go out on. But realistically, do you want to see Goldberg again? Do you want to see Taker wrestle again? No, not really. <clears throat> so hopefully I answered the multi-faceted uh, parts of your question. But I thought it was funny. Um, but, I get, but I respect your opinion. I understand that people were pissed off about it. Number two, thoughts on WWE breaking up the Riot Squad and still refusing to use Liv Morgan on SmackDown for over SmackDown Live for over two months now. This is some bullshit. Yeah, now I was complaining about them not using Ruby Riot, and it turns out she needed shoulder surgery. I think double shoulder surgery. So she's having surgery on one once I recover, she'll have surgery on the other. <laughs> Similar to Sami Zayn, I believe. And even if it's just one shoulder, she's out until at least SummerSlam, if not the fall. That is pretty fucking ridiculous. Now, my question is about Ruby Riot, and I'm just going to go to Ruby here for a second. Why did they have her wrestle on the on the UK tour on like the house shows if she was hurt? That's what I don't fucking understand. Like, just have her get the surgery, have Sarah Logan team with her, um, have, have you know just have them do a cross promotional thing, or have Liv work singles, have Liv team up with somebody else. I mean, I love Ruby, Liv, and Sarah together. They deserved a whole lot more than they got, but maybe Ruby should have gotten the surgery sooner. Um, because I don't think that this is a coincidence that she suddenly had to have that. They were probably having her work tags to get through that and then have the surgery, which was stupid. You got enough goddamn women. Call a woman up from NXT and let your talents rest. Your talents to beat their bodies to shit. You know, from jobbing all the time. Wait, that's just the Riot Squad. I'm sorry. Well, and others. But we're talking about the Riot Squad here. Sarah Logan's another one they should be using while well, has not been seen since WrestleMania that I can recall. As for Liv, as for the whole point of your question, Liv is the healthiest out of them, even though it seems like Sarah's doing pretty well according to her Instagram and stuff like that. <laughs> She's got a lot, of, plenty of time to do uh, bow hunting stuff and, you know, target practice. Liv was never, Liv was and still is not my favorite wrestler, favorite character, whatever. She has grown on me. She is better than I thought she would be. <laughs> has gotten better in the ring. And even so, even if she was 
barely, barely above average. Which she's above average. Let's let's be honest about that. She's still growing. She's still a project. But even if she was just above average, why can't she be used when they're using the same damn women every single week? And because of this wild card rule, this fucking bullshit was another great question you asked about um, in episode ten. The wild card rule has made uh, women like Liv. I mean, Mickey. Mickey's currently injured. Even Bailey feels like a bit of an afterthought as champion. She's just there. Liv has not been seen on TV. Use Liv in tag matches. Something. Have her team with the Iconics. Have her team with Ember if you're going to have her be a babyface. Something. Anything. At this fucking point, what the fuck are you doing? And now Alexa is part of the wild card rule. <coughs> facing Bailey, a Raw superstar facing SmackDown's Bailey for the SmackDown women's title. Oh, brand split. You are fucking dead. And fuck the wild card rule. And fuck Vince McMahon. But back to Liv. Liv should be used. I don't know if she's going to be a heel or face or whatever. Probably a babyface. Use her. Fucking use her in tag teams. Fucking use her in six-woman tags. Give her... I answered a question on episode 11 about an open challenge. Have Bailey do open challenges after stomping grounds. Have Liv answer her. <coughs> Take her to the limit, something like that. Have Liv face uh, Bailey at Extreme Rules. I mean, Liv doesn't have to win, but just do something. Because it is some fucking bullshit. It is 100% bullshit that Liv's not being used. Even if somebody is not the biggest fan of Liv Morgan, the fact that they have so many underutilized talents that they aren't fucking doing anything with, it's lame. It's goddamn lame. And also, another person that they're underutilizing is Sonya. Another reason why I got the Pride shirt back there. Well, so it's Pride Month, by the way. Consenting adults. They're just adults who want to find love and be accepted for who they are. Nothing wrong with being part of the LGBTQ community or being a supporter of it. Get your face and head out of the goddamn Bible and in, and out of the clouds and into the real world. But back to Liv. She should be used better. I don't know why she isn't. I don't know unless it's suddenly that she has to have surgery. Which, judging by her her Instagram, um, her Livstagram. And yes, people have pointed out pictures to me. And yes, I can see why people like her. Looks wise. To me... Looks are secondary when it comes to her. I have been very... Because you can have all the looks in the world. It, unless you go in the can go in the ring or get better in the ring, it's not really going to matter. Liv has gotten better in the ring. Even in just the past eight months? Pretty much since about... Eh, actually, about this time last year. Actually, Liv was starting to win me over a little bit. And got better. And deserves a chance to be on TV more. You got so many hours of TV. Fuck, have her go, have her go uh, face Becky on Raw. Something. Just wild card. Use, have, have a SmackDown star show up there. And oh, hey, Liv's really good. She took Becky to the limit for seven, eight minutes. I need to see what she does on SmackDown. But no, they don't want to do that. They apparently want to nuke SmackDown just to have it go to Fox with no goddamn momentum and then wonder why suddenly that deal collapses. But Liv really... <clears throat> Liv is not the greatest in the ring. She doesn't have to be. She deserves to be used better. At least used... Don't ever job out, but have her. Don't ever go on like a you know, 184 win streak. Don't ever be Livberg, Morganberg, Iceberg. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Just utilize Liv. Otherwise, what the fuck are you keeping people for? I'm not saying release her, but use her. You got the TV time. Stop with the recap. Stop with Shane McMahon being part of every single goddamn segment because he's the best in the world. I don't know what that was. I was going to try and do like something like that. And then I was like, nope, that's pretty bad visual. So the whole point is use Liv. Use the women better. <clears throat> Not just on SmackDown, but on Raw. But Liv's been healthy. Use her. Anyway, number three. The winner of the uh, Super Showdown Battle Royal, Mansoor, I think is how you say his name. Fuck, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> is the same man who egged on Rhea Ripley to spew her homophobic slur during that Twitch stream. One, I didn't know that. Now, it was a bit of a glitchy video, and I remember you actually had to send me the video uh, when that whole thing went down of Liv using that uh, homophobic slur that I will not repeat here, and no one repeat it in the comments, or hate to say it, I'm going to have to ban you. That's not... I'm, I'm, a, I'm a channel for a lot of jokes. I'm a channel for a lot of things, but there's a lot... <clears throat> there's very few, I will, uh, very few things I will not allow. That's one of them. So, no. Just don't do that. Just putting it out there right now. Because I'm putting it out there basically to see if anybody's going to bite. But I did not know that he was the one to do that. But the rest of her question is, um, 
what do you think? What do I think of this? What do I think of the fact that he was the one that did that? I, she goes on to say, I personally feel that uh, this guy was let off the hook super easy while everybody crucified Rhea. To be fair, there were a lot of people that were Rhea supporters that were crucifying her. And I mean, I'm not calling out anybody specifically, but there were people I know <laughs> that were Rhea supporters way before, like, you know, I even, like, way before I even knew who Rhea... And I'm talking back when Rhea Ripley was first in the Mae Young Classic, well, Mae Young Classic 1, before she totally reinvented herself. I was a fan of Rhea Ripley from there. Now, seeing what she did, <clears throat> transforming her body and that kind of stuff, great. And there were people that literally turned like instantly. Being upset at what she said, I totally get it. It was a wrong thing to say. She came out and, def and didn't... It wasn't the best apology, but it was a good apology. What she said <clears throat> was, you know, taking steps forward and everything and try and understanding the, uh, the consequences of her actions and knowing that she made a mistake and that she fucked up. And that's good that she did that. Now, so good on Rhea. <clears throat> People did crucify Rhea a little bit too much where I'm like, let's get the context and let's hear her apologize first. And I know that there were people, there were people that fucking wanted to kill me because I said that. And I go, well, geez, forgive me for wanting somebody to take it easy on, or take it easy on somebody when I thought that they, you know, maybe when, maybe we should wait, even though it was a hateful thing to say. This guy, Mansoor, other videos have come out about the guy making fun of Jewish people. Now, I don't know how old those videos are. Um, if they were right when he got signed to WWE or just before. But he only got signed to WWE, what, right around the greatest Royal Rumble, something like that. So only 16 months, 15, 16 months. So he's been, and he's had a couple of appearances in NXT, uh, on NXT TV. He had a match with Dominic Dijakovic, and I'm sure he had another match. So I'll say this first. Go to the name for Wayne Battle Royal. It was a huge pop. He seemed genuine. That's where the praise is going to end. Because if he was the one that egged on Rhea Ripley, one, Rhea should have put her foot down. The peer pressure, <laughs> hell of a thing. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to say I haven't given in to peer pressure, especially at a young age, younger than that. But I used to be homophobic and, and you know, sexist, racist, transphobic, whatever you want to call it. I used to be a whole lot of that in my early days of high school. So I get peer pressure and I get that kind of stuff. But put your foot down and say no. Because <clears throat> Rhea, Rhea could have broken that guy in half. Oh, not saying she should have, but she could have. But him encouraging that, unless uh, unless there is a really, really good explanation for it, and I don't know if there is, I don't know if they should keep the guy. I don't know if they should, especially with these other videos that have come out. That video taken in a vacuum and stuff like that, they weren't going to release Rhea, <laughs> they shouldn't release him. But he was the one that encouraged her. I actually had to go find that video, I don't remember who shared it, but... Um, I did hear that video and I go, hmm, you seem to be the one encouraging that. So, you know, I had to look at it through different glasses. So what should happen? <clears throat> one, the guy should be buried effectively on NXT TV. Because this stuff on Super Showdown really doesn't mean anything. Now, it meant something to the Saudi Arabian people. Fine. So does, you know, so does watching their government, you know, hack up people with bone saws. And hating gay people and that kind of stuff. And I'm not saying that everybody in Saudi Arabia is like that, but there are some really fucked up views over there because I don't know what the fuck the deal is. I don't know what's wrong with them. <clears throat> but, oh wait, deeply religious area, that's the problem. Back to Mansoor. He, Mansoor, Ma Monsoon, whatever the hell his name is, he should be reprimanded for that. And he may have already been reprimanded for that video. If there's other stuff that has come out and he is making fun of Jewish people, especially if he still feels that way, considering Goldberg was on the card, <laughs> Heyman, I don't know if there are other Jewish people in WWE, at least uh, as far as like roster talents. There's so many people, it's probably escaping me. If he still feels that way, if he's that hateful, because if he is homophobic, if he's still homophobic <laughs> and he's that hateful towards Jewish people and possibly others, you kind of can't have that on your roster. But then again, they would have to get rid of Orton because Orton hates black people and calls him stupid, stupid, and other things like that. And I hate to say it, AJ Styles, given some of the stuff he has. So it's a slippery slope when you start releasing people like that or, you know, talking about releasing people like that. He should be punished and reprimanded effectively. And again, may have already been 
But do I think it's bullshit that he didn't get crucified for it? Yes. I'm not too shocked considering Rhea's a woman. That's probably a big part of it. But also, maybe the people looked up to her and everything and they felt betrayed. And I understand that. I totally understand that. There are people who still haven't forgiven Rhea Ripley, don't feel the apology was enough. That's okay. You guys would have fucking hated me during my youth. If YouTube was around when I was a kid, <coughs> like, you know, a teenager and everything and stuff like that, you guys would have hated me. One, I would have been banned off YouTube and probably would have been killed for the stuff I said and the stuff I thought. Thankfully, I don't. Now I'm an equal opportunity offender and I just joke about, about everything. But Mansoor, he should be punished. I just don't know how you're going to do it because then you go on that slope like I just talked about of like Orton, even though Orton styles are like way up here and you know, Mansoor's <coughs> down there in the dirt. Um, no offense, but he is because like he won that battle royal. What the fuck else was he doing besides that? I think it's ridiculous he didn't get crucified for it, and it's kind of bullshit. I don't think Rhea deserved the hate that she got, even though I understood some of it. Uh, number four, question number four. Who do you think will be, and this will probably be the shortest one that will answer. Um, who do you think will be Bray Wyatt's uh, first feud once he returns to the main roster under this new Firefly Funhouse gimmick? I was going to say Ray, but Ray got injured. Um... He returns to Raw. God, I would almost just put him in the feud with Rollins, but the fuck else could you have him feud with? Joe? No. Because he's got to be a heel. Bray's got to be a heel. <clears throat> have him beat up some lower card guys. Have him beat Have him attack the Usos. Have him feud with Reigns. Have Bray beat Reigns on a big pay-per-view. Yeah, wild card rule, all that stuff and everything. But have him do that. And then you start Bray off on the right path. Other than that, because it's like, maybe if he goes to SmackDown, he could have a feud with Finn. We could actually have a decent feud between them. He could feud with Apollo and just beat him on TV and everything. I know, no offense against Apollo, but he doesn't mean anything. Um, Nakamura, even though Nakamura's a heel, whatever Nakamura has meant shit, feud with Rusev. There's a few people he could feud with. More on SmackDown, I think, than Raw, but he's going to be on Raw because he's more of a character and everything. And SmackDown's more of the sports-driven show. Um... I'd say Alistair, but Alistair, I think you had to build that one up. So, he can feud with... He can feud with a bunch of people that are... He can feud with Rude. He can feud with Gable. <coughs> Toss him around here and there and that kind of stuff because of the wild card. He could feud with... Hmm, he could beat up Drake Maverick, even though Drake's supposed to be a heel. He can feud with a lot of people. I just, it, Ray, like, Ray getting injured, <clears throat> that was like a hand-picked, perfect opponent for Bray to beat up and then go off on a run after that. After that, I'm not really sure who else. He could be at Lucha House Party. Why not? He could he, he feud with them for a little bit. <clears throat> beat up one, one week. Beat up another, another week. Beat up another, the following week. Beat up two, you know, beat them up two on one at some point. Beat them up three on one on a pay-per-view, even though that wouldn't be the best use of Bray. It would be a way to get him over because Lucha House Party don't mean anything. Nothing against Grand Metal League or Lince Dorado. Everything against Kalisto. Um, <coughs> I would say that. Lucha House Party. Why the fuck not? Question number five. When the fuck is Vince going to stop relying on Taker to save his ass when it comes to these Saudi shows? Does he really want Taker to not be able to walk? Because that's, uh, that's the fucking rate it's going at. No fucking respect for Taker's legacy whatsoever. It will stop when Taker says no. That that's really when it is. And I'm, not, I'm not knocking your question because you're absolutely right. Taker, I will do, <clears throat> you can add a little more fuel to an upcoming unpopular wrestling opinion I'm going to do about The Undertaker's career probably sometime later this week. Um, sometime Tuesday or Wednesday or something like that. He is somebody that could, <clears throat> that could have ended at Mania 28, maybe even Mania 30. Have Brock break the streak. And that's it. I would still have Bray, you swap and have Bray break the streak and have Brock destroy Cena. Because then you could have had Bray be the new Fina. But nope, they fucked all that up, didn't they? But if you stick with it, have Brock break, <coughs> have Brock break the streak. And that's it for Taker. That's it. He doesn't ever come back. Yeah, we don't get laughing Brock and Taker. We don't get that. We don't get Shane nearly dying. We don't get, you know, uh, Undertaker rest in Peace. That was a weird Chewbacca impression there. It's probably the closest I ever got to any kind of Chewbacca impression. Probably because I'm tired. It would... Taker's legacy has been damaged for years. Let's just be honest about it. It has. It has been damaged. Even if he stuck around after the streak and lost to Brock in the Hell in a Cell 2015. 
then that should have been it. <clears throat> because now we are closing in on four years since that. I would argue the Taker has not delivered a better, a, a good performance since, say, that match. And that match wasn't even that good. He just doesn't have it anymore. That match with Reigns, like, you know, extending it further, if you had Reigns beat him, <clears throat> okay. He left his hat and his coat in the ring. That was Taker's way of saying he's fucking done. And he's, and Vince still keeps bringing him back. Taker's got to say no. He's got to say no to the money. And I know it's stupid money. Him and Goldberg probably got paid at least a million apiece. If they didn't, then I don't know what the fuck they went over there for. If it wasn't at least, you know, low seven figures, you know, the bare minimum of seven figures, there's no way that they were going over there. Uh, especially for that shitty match. <laughs> Taker's legacy has been damaged, though, for years and years and years. It is Vince to blame. But it's also, Taker's got to be the one to say no. He's got to say, Vince, I'm done. Because if, and you're right, it will end up with Taker not being able to walk. Like, look at his face on, you know, just look at the, I mean, I know you didn't watch Super Showdown, and I don't blame you. <laughs> Thank you, by the way, for enjoying my rant. But Taker's look at the end of that match. During that match, at the end of that match, he knew it was shit. He knew it was time. He knew it was a mistake to do it. Do I blame him for getting paid? Fuck no, I don't. He's got a family. He's got kids. He's got kids. Slater was in the Battle Royal also. Michelle McCool and him have a life to build. He has given every fucking thing he possibly can to this business. Let Undertaker fucking retire. <clears throat> or it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. He may end up being the dead man in the ring. Literally because he may die in the ring. I don't want to see that. Having said that, I guarantee... Tell me that I'm wrong, folks. But I guarantee you it's going to be Sting versus Undertaker at whatever the November one is. That's what it's going to fucking be. What is it going to take? Vince is going to stop relying on the old guys when they finally get up the guts to tell Vince we're done. That's it. And Vince may still not listen. Because Vince himself is a stubborn old man that still thinks that he can control everything. When he just can't do it anymore. It just, that's just what it's going to end up taking. And so thanks, Elena. Thank you for the great questions. I'm going to get to Great Love's questions. I'm going to finish up with a little tease for a future show that I'm going to be doing um, a little bit later. Uh, great Love 91. And three, her three questions are, by a great person to talk to. I checked out a little bit of one of your YouTube videos. Keep it up. Keep working hard. You got this. Keep doing the good work. Um, anyway, number one, a uh, wrestler you'd like to see in a movie. Ignoring the obvious porn jokes that I could make, um, I mean, just, you know, because it would be easy to make. I think Becky would be good in a, um, I think Becky would be good in an action movie. I know she was in the Marine 6, but the Marine movies don't count. Sorry, they don't. Um, the Marine movies are shit. I mean, even the John Cena one wasn't very good. Um, I would like to see Lacey Evans. Hmm. I'd like to see Lacey Evans in an action movie. Because I think her size, the fact she's a former Marine... <laughs> The legit athletic background she has, that would be good. I would love to see Braun Strowman. I mean, he was obviously a stuntman thing. I think he was in one of the... Oh, was he in Watson and Holmes? Yeah. He was in, he was in that Holmes and Watson or whatever it was. The horrible John C. Riley, uh, Will Ferrell one that he did. I like to see Braun as like a beefy guy in a movie. He could never be a leading guy. Um, One that I'm going to throw out, Ricochet. I would just love to see Ricochet in some kind of ninja movie. Because I think he could pull that off really well. Velveteen, I would love to see Velveteen in a Prince movie. I would love to see that. I think he could pull it off. Granted, he's <clears throat> totally black. Prince was, you know, his, you know, what he was. But tell me that that wouldn't be pretty interesting to see Velveteen play that. I think he could do it. Um, those are some names. I mean, I know it's just a silly question, but it's like that... I, I would say I would say Velveteen. Put Velveteen in the Prince movie. Fuck not. Jimi Hendrix, something like that. Um, even though I don't know if he could play, if he could be like Jimi Hendrix, he could be like Prince, because it's basically Jimi Hendrix Prince uh, mashup with you know Patrick Clark's own influence and the fact that he's insanely talented and only in his early twenties. And fucking Christ, what am I doing in my life besides talking on the internet? Um, good on Velveteen, by the way. <clears throat> but those are some that you know came to mind. Question number two, who from NXT has the main roster hurt the most? How long do you have? I mean, are you talking recently? Because EC3 would be the most recent. The Revival. I answered those on there. 
Ember has been hurt because she hasn't really been all, used all that much. The Riot Squad, because granted Ruby, Sarah, and Liv weren't doing a ton in NXT at the time, but they called them a great to make up a faction. And then they job out, and they job out, and they job out, and they job out, and they lose matches during their six, uh, <coughs> during their entrances. And I always, I, I always would joke about that. I said during, I said the Riot Squad lost, a, you know, another match during their entrance. And it was a running joke. And it made it sound like I was hammering on Liv, Sarah, and Ruby. No, it wasn't. It was just the fact they were jobbing out a whole bunch. Um, I would say Alistair has actually been hurt the most. Because I hate to say it, but Alistair, <laughs> unless they give him a big program for SummerSlam, and I mean, I'm, I'm not talking like WWE title, unless he goes heel and just snaps on Kofi and he, he wins a title, which would be something. Alistair would be one, um, but EC3 has got to be the most baffling because <laughs> all that beef, that beef, pal, all that Ethan Carter beef. <laughs> I need to stop doing the Vince impression because it's hurting me. I would say him. I would say him in the revival. And I don't want to say, well, you know, a lot of the women. A lot of the women because they called him up and they use him a little bit and then they don't use him at all. Like Sonya and Mandy have kind of been just background players a little bit. I mean, not everybody can be on top all the time. <laughs> stop thinking about the women on top. Moving on. They have... Too many women that they could be using better, and they aren't. But I say EC3, the revival. I'd say Alistair, just because they haven't had him wrestle on TV, and he's been called up for a number of months, even though he was, you know, in NXT for a while, like after him and Ricochet made their main roster debuts. That, like, there's that. There's others. I mean, Nikki Cross is just now starting to be used a little better. Heavy machinery. Lacey Evans is being used the best out of all of them. And that's nothing against Lacey Evans. I love Lacey Evans. But yeah, just <clears throat> you go back a while ago though, Ascension were hurt. Um Bo Dallas, he was never gonna be anything great, but still he was bad. When they called Tyson Kidd back up, they really didn't use him all that well, except in a tag team with Cesaro. Thank God uh, Tyson Kidd's okay. Um, but people they called up, I would God. I'd say Nakamura, only because they had him job to Jinder and stuff like that, which was horrifying. It was terrible. Jinder's title reign was terrible. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if anybody watching this is a fan of Jinder. I hate it. I hate it. I know other people liked it, and that's fine. I mean, if that's what you like, it's all good. I'm not going to tell you you're wrong, but Nakamura was one that was ruined. Other than that, it's just so, there's just so many mashing up in my head. Tyler Breeze actually would probably spring to mind. Is one of them because they never did anything with him. They had, a feud, they had him feud with Ziggler, and that was it. That's really all they did. Then they did the fashion police and everything, and <coughs> that went absolutely nowhere. So, yeah, but go back to EC3 and uh, the revival. And question number three, do you think Sasha will ever wrestle outside of WWE? Yes, but not this year. I think they will come to an agreement where maybe they will let her out of her contract after a bit. They will release her early. I think she's going to wrestle for the company again this year. I don't know what the fuck she's going to do, but I believe she is going to wrestle for them this year. <clears throat> Maybe next year she will wrestle somewhere else. She's only 27. Like, she'll be either 28 later this year or she'll be 28 next year. I don't know exactly when her birthday is. I don't give a shit because it's not my business. But she has enough in the tank, even with her bumping crazy like a motherfucker. She's not going to wrestle past 35. Not at that style. But she will wrestle outside of WWE. She could wrestle in stardom. She could wrestle in AEW, provided AEW doesn't totally flame out. Impact, even though I don't know if Impact <coughs> is too small of a platform for her. Ring of Honor for the Women of Honor. She could wrestle in Shine and Shimmer. Excuse me, the NWA, that kind of stuff. Uh, she could wrestle for a lot of promotions. AEW would be the most logical one, especially if they get her soon within like the next six months or something like that, or even by just after Mania next year, they could use her really well and probably make her mat and probably, you know, make her matter more than she did when she was tag teaming with Bailey. And I got nothing against Bailey. Look, Sasha and Bailey are real life friends. And that's great. But I wanted them feuding. I didn't want them teaming up. Now I mean I understand they're friends and that's great. I just <clears throat> Sasha's better as a goddamn heel. And should be a single star. So should Bailey, because Bailey's doing some great things right now, despite the bad booking that they had given her before that. Yes, Sasha will wrestle outside of WWE. It just may it, it may not be till next year. It might not be till 2021. It might hold her to the contract. Who the fuck knows? But she will wrestle somewhere outside of WWE 
I think by next year. Hopefully. <clears throat> AJAT800, and this is going to finish up the questions here, um, asking top five favorite Twilight Zone episodes and top five least favorite. The least favorite, I always refer, and I refer to this, you know, on episode 10 where I talked about my favorite shows of all time, TV shows of all time. I didn't like season four because of the hour-long format. Now, they were good episodes. They were good stories. But the nice thing about seasons one, two, three, and five, <clears throat> and this is of the original, was there were bite-sized chunks and they left a lot to the imagination. They told you some good stuff, but some of it was left like, okay, wait, I want to see what happens next. I want to see if they revisit the story at some point. I always like how they were shorter episodes. Season four, you could pick any five from there. Even though they were good, I didn't like the hour-long format. As <clears throat> far as the top five, where is everybody at number five? Um, <clears throat> I Sing the Body Electric, number four. That was the one about, uh, where is everybody is the one about the astronaut that go that, that is isolated and everything in a tank, you know, trying to um, <clears throat> find, you know, figure out where everybody is, but it's an experiment. I Sing the Body Electric is about a woman that's a robot that becomes a nanny. Uh, that was pretty good. Um, Eye of the Beholder, number two. Um, <clears throat> Or number three, To Serve Man, my second favorite. Uh, Eye of the Beholder is the one about the pig face people and the blonde woman that says, you know, that is deemed to be too ugly for society and everything, even though it's these pig face aliens and it's, it's humans that are considered ugly, even though this blonde is a freaking knockout and I would move goddamn mountains to have a woman like that. But that aside, <clears throat> number two, To Serve Man, it's a cookbook. You know, that one. And then number one, the monsters are due on Maple Street, about what would happen if you didn't trust your fellow neighbor, would you go insane? So those are my top five. And then again, top five least favorite, probably any of the, probably, probably any of the season four ones. And I, I'll look over the seasons. Eventually I might do like, you know, <clears throat> my top 25 favorite Twilight Zone episodes, maybe top 50 favorite, since there were a lot of episodes in the season, but we'll see. So anyway, folks, I'm really, really tired after doing back-to-back -back episodes of Hashtag Ask for Honesty. So... If I don't do any until Friday, don't be shocked. But thank you guys for the great questions. I hope I answered them in as great a detail as possible. Do you agree? Do you disagree with what I said? Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritlin. I will see you soon.